Well, it's another gloomy day in Illinois. Humidity is really high, although the temperature is not bad, but it still feels real muggy. So what's for dinner today? Well, got 350 temp. Got a rotisserie pork roast. Yeah. So time to check the temp on it. Got to get it up to... What is it? Uh, 145 before it can be done. So what I did with this is it's a mixture of salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, smoked paprika, if you like. I like the smoked paprika. Then the back bar I turned on on high to sear the meat, burn a little bit of the fat that's on the top of it. And after that, turned it down to 350. I got it up to like 400. Turn it down to 350. Do that for like 15 minutes. And then uh, basted it with some Jack Daniels original barbecue sauce. So right now I'm going to check to see if this puppy is done. Hopefully it is. I'm starving. So for the menu today it is oh, we got a garden fresh salad. We have, well not my garden, but we have mashed potatoes and what are those little cabbages called again? I can't remember. I never remember what those little cabbages are called. So I want to see 145 and we are Oh, hey everybody, what's going there. on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well out there. I'm doing pretty damn good myself. Today I'm going to finish up working on George's GNL and get this thing shipped back to him. Otherwise, to the wood chipper it goes. Alright, so I'm back here with the final video of George's GNL. This will be the setup and any other little things that I can find with it. Uh, that I need to change or fix before I send it back. So what I ended up doing is I upgraded him from just a regular flat stamped piece of metal for a string tree. I upgraded him to a roller tree. But I did find something out after tuning this thing up and he wants the bridge to float. So, well, when you push back on the bridge, you hear that clicking sound? Well, that's the strings binding in the nut over here. Now, if you remember, I shaved and top of the nut down, but I didn't do anything with the nut slots that are in the nut for the string. So, if you can imagine that this nut was left alone, and the spacing that was inside there with that string really deep in that nut, and then you go and pull on this thing, that's going to throw everything out of tune. And may not even go back to tune, uh, if he ends up changing, you know, pushing on it or pulling back or whatever he's doing with the guitar, that's going to cause a bunch of issues and a bunch of bullshit that, you know, nobody needs. So I got to adjust that once I get the rest of the setup done. So if you remember in the first video of this guitar, when it showed up, the guitar was pretty much in tune, which is a no-no to do when you're shipping a guitar out. And this thing had a lot of relief in it. I mean, you could see going down the neck that this thing just had way too much relief so when I took the strings off and I straightened out the neck usually when I put like this guitar has nines on it usually with nines it works out pretty good usually when you put nines on the guitar and you after you straighten out a neck nine times out of ten you'll pull the string tension will pull the neck and give it a relief of in anywhere between 10 thousandths to sometimes 13 thousandths. So there might be a little bit of adjustment, but it should be damn near close to being where you're comfortable with it. Some people like a 10 thousandths, some people like a 12. I like setting things at 12 thousandths. Depends on the guitar. Sometimes I'll get away with setting it to a 10 thousandths. So what I want to do, the guitar is in pitch. And what I want to do is capo it at the first fret. And take my 12 thousandths, and I'm going to check to see what the relief is inside here. So I'm going to fret it right where the fretboard and the neck meet up over here with the body. And can I check that a little bit? And I'm liking what I'm seeing here. So this roughly pulled me right into the 12 thousand range. 
There's a slight movement, a very, very minute movement in the string, but it's good enough for what I'm doing. Now what I want to check is see what the action height is at the 12th and 17th fret. So, all right, I'm looking at a not quite 564 and a little bit past a 16th. And it's the same way down here. And on the high E, I'm looking at a 364. So that's pretty damn nice low action. That's a nice low action, but what really sucks is at that low of an action, how much uh, fret buzz you're going to get, especially in the lower register. Not too bad. Actually, I kind of like it. It's a little bit of fret buzz there, but it's not a lot to where it's going to uh, be a problem. Now, how about dead notes? As fat fingers. So it doesn't sound too bad at all. Now this neck has a nine and a half inch radius. So what I want to do is I want to match up the arch of the bridge here, because each one of these saddles are adjustable, and set this thing up to where uh, the strings match the radius of the neck, because it probably is not even set up. And I bet you if I put this thing on here, right at the bottom, Kind of stick it right at the bottom. Yeah, see, this, it should sound like this. You could hear it vibrating on that. So I'm going to have to change that. And once I get this set up, I can work on the nut area. So I'll go ahead and... It is half a turn. Quarter of a turn. Still nowhere near where it's supposed to be. Make sure that these are moving up evenly. Yeah, they are. Another half a turn. Let's see where I'm at. Now the two end ones are touching, but these guys here are not touching at all. Now that's touching. Barely touching. About a quarter of a turn. Yeah, that's gonna the middle one's gonna have to come up quite a bit. So I've got a full turn. A full turn. Make sure that these things are straight. I want to see them in steps, not curved. A little bit more. Give it a half quarter of a turn. That's what I want. Half a turn. 
make sure I'm still sitting straight. There you go. This one's gonna come up. Some people will do this on from under the string. It really doesn't matter if you do it from under or the top. That's where I want it. They all should be dead. Check that arch. Oh yeah. Now you can't put this on top of the bridge because it's not going to give you a good reading. You got to do this on the strings. This way you can feel the vibration. And you're not pushing on this. You're just feeling the vibration going from each string in this. Sometimes it gives you a really definite buzz. And if it gives you a real definite buzz, then you might be pushing down on that string or the whole thing. You gotta be put under really light. So that's right where I want that. And then that'll give you my action height all the way down. See, I'm still in between a 64th and a 16th on the two ends. Uh, in between a in between a 364th and a 16th. That's, this is right where I want it to be. So, all right, let's check this nut thing going on over here. It is like an 18 thousandths or 19 thousandths between the string and the top of the fret. So, let me find my 16, 17, 18. Here's a 19 thousandths. Close. See, that's what I want. Should be listening to. Now, this side here. Get the angle right. See, that's sitting right on there. So I'm going to have to be very, very careful when I open up those slots because I really don't want to drop this down anymore. It's pretty much right where I want it. So what I need to do is I need to figure out the string between the string and the fretboard. Under the string and the fretboard up against the nut. Let's see here. Let's go with a 32 and a 30. Still got some play in there. So it wouldn't be much more than that. So if I go with a 15. I am not even touching it, so I need to go a little bit deeper than that. So what if I go with a, let's go with an 18, see what that brings me. And 18 is too much, so how about, if a 15 is not enough, and 18 is too much, how about if we do a 16? Too much. So let's go with a, back with the 15. Maybe I did that. 
kind of goofier or hit her own one. Let's try 15 again. Well, that is right up against it. So what I'm going to do is fix those guys so they're not binding anymore. Oh, that's the one I need. That's the one I need. So let's get rid of that binding sound. Put this right on top of the So that's good. Let's check this one out here. Do the same thing with that one. Next. Get this thing back up to tune.
All right, so now that there's string tension and I have reseated the three strings, no more clicking sound. All gone. Nice, real nice. Action height is good. All right, so put these tools away and start on to the, for the next project. All right, so whoever said using a secret nut sauce doesn't know what the hell they're doing. You shouldn't have to use any type of an oil lubricant or anything on your strings or on your nut in order to achieve, you know, not having a clicking sound when uh, either you're tuning the guitar, or changing tuning, or even using a Trem or Floyd Rose. Uh, well, Floyd Rose, you'd have a locking system on there, but Trem, you know what I mean. You got to be careful when you're doing this because you still want to go on an angle when you're cutting the nut slot on an angle towards the headstock uh, without hitting the fretboard. You know, this is not like it is like a Les Paul t type of a nut on your where it's right at the end of the fretboard. You got some fretboard material, you know, before it hits to the nut. So you got to be careful with that. And you still want to go on that pitch towards the headstock. Otherwise, you end up getting a sitar sound. And... That's no good. So what I'm going to do is set the intonation on this thing and, well, intonate it. So I could go one or two ways with this. Uh, Randy was showing something that uh, was kind of cool where you get the string to kind of vibrate. Let's see here. Positives on this side. Turn this thing on. So if I go ahead and this up to tune and then I take and fret it and set this on the string and get the string to vibrate you can feel it actually you could probably hear it vibrating and yeah that's pretty damn good his way so shut off no it's still on it just seems to sit down the string right you see I can adjust this on the fly which is kind of nice It's gotta go back. Now to retune it. Go back a little bit more. A little bit more. That 
was good. See, I'm adjusting that third string and no clicking. That one's gonna go forward. Second string, no clicking, adjusting the tuning. Bring that forward a little bit more. Adjusting the tuning on the high E string and it is not clicking. This idea isn't bad to do, but I'd rather do it the old fashioned way. Alright, so now I'm going to do pickup height on this puppy. And I'm going to need a Phillips screwdriver, which is right here. So let's do the base side first. And of course, it is going to have to come up. Yes, it is. And let's do the trouble side. And I'll go back and check both sides again. Okay. So now it's too tight. I call that good. I call that good. Way off on that one side. A bit more. I should turn this side up too because it changes the angle on the other side. Good. Even more. That's good. That's good. This one not so good. Good. Just a little bit more. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. 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 All right. Now, the one thing I want to do is check a few things before I plug this thing in and test it out because I need to adjust a few things here. And let's see here. This is needs to go back just a hair. 
So let me get my screwdriver. Tighten these springs up just a hair. And change the tuning to make sure it's because it's going to be a little sharp. Alright, I got the bridge leveled. Let's see here, I can go in with the bridge just a little tiny bit more. Yeah, spam. Brook, Illinois, sending us spam. And then bother leave a message. Oh, George is going to have a field day with this when he gets it when, to try to get the strings tuned. He wanted a floating bridge. Because I am not shipping this to him in tune. All right. Yep, that's where I want it now. Now the next thing I want to do is kind of hear the springs kind of rattling inside here a little bit. I want to stop that from happening. So what I'm going to do is pluck each uh, spring out of here and put my little touches to it with my shielding heat shrinking tubing. I'll we'll start with the center. I went to Menards and I got myself a bag of goodies here. A lot of stuff that I was out of. Spent, shit, what did I spend? $131 at Menards for a bunch of shit that I needed. And one of the things that I need is something I cannot find right now. Where the hell are they? Hey, Trick, what's your name? Where are you? Here you is. Alright, that's one of the things that I need. A bunch of sanding stuff, sanding materials. All right. So these are kind of like already cut. I couldn't find a roll. But I'm going to have to cut some of this off. And they only really come with three per package. So I need my scissors. Make sure they are tight because these things come loose. I need to trim off, trim off some of this. Oh, maybe I'll get two out of each one. That'll be nice.
All right, so I got my three cut. A little bit of waste. Oh well, can't have everything, right? Now again, I don't want to heat this thing up to where it shrinks on the tubing so much that it's going to tighten around the spring and cause me an issue where I'm not going to be able to retract that spring. All I want to do is muffle the sound of that spring. Ah, cheap shit. Mm -hmm. Where's my lighter? I need to get one of those torches again. Those torches work real nice. All right, so this is, see it's loose, hot. Loose, but it's gonna muffle the sound of the springs when he bangs or knocks into something. That can be a little bit more snug. That's better. One more. No more, no more like springy sound. I like doing this. It's cheaper than having to buy the right springs that don't make sound noise to do it this way, and it's easy. Anyone can go over to auto parts store, home improvement store, wherever, and buy some heat shrinking tubing to fit over the spring and do this yourself. Again, making sure that this is not real, real tight. You want it to be able to slide. It can be snug up a little bit more. See, now I just made it too snug. Now I just made it too snug. Start over. I mean, I could have gave that to him, but if I'm not happy with it, it's going to get redone. Okay, it's too loose. a little bit too loose. That's it. No more. No more little vibrating sounds of you guys. You guys will be silent now. Check his tuning.
pretty much all the strings stay in the same place. All right, right right here. Yep, kind of shrunk it a little bit too much, and now that's kind of no good. Well, I could probably still use it for a piece of wire, something like a eight gauge wire or something. So I'll hold on to it. I got enough to do. I got enough to do about one or two more guitars. All right, so I'm liking what I'm finding here. Everything seems to be going good. Everything seems to be lined up. There is no problems. There's no sitar sound. There's no more nut binding. No more really bad bow. So I can now put the back plate on and test this thing out. It's got plastic on the back plate. Let's get that plastic off for him. Like I said, this plastic left a real bad residue on the front cover. Let's see if it's going to do it with this. On the pick guard when I removed it, it left a real bad residue on there. And this kind of looks like it's doing, this is doing the same thing. I don't know if you can see it, the residue right there. It's doing the same thing. So I'm going to have to polish this before I put this on. Yeah. That's the only thing I don't like about this plastic protective shit on the pit guard, back cover, even the truss rod covers have it. Uh, it just puts this, this, if it's on for a very long time, you can see the residue on it. It's not even shiny anymore. It's just like a dull plastic. And a lot of times it's a pain in the ass to get off. And if this shit sat in the sun, oh, you want to see a hell of a time getting it off. All right, so I'm going to polish this up, polish up the guitar a little bit, test her out, and then box her up and send her home.